Hello. <laughs> I'm just fanning about my hair. I've got this new contraption on the uh, phone, which is going to make me look blurry to everybody, but it's a, a magnifier, so you can see the whole length of me lying on the floor. So we're going to try it out today, because you don't really need to look at me very much, do you? So, But for those people that do end up watching it... Oh, and I've got a very creaky door, which I should have thought about sorting out. <laughs> this is going to flap about in the wind. So wait there, and I'll just try and sort it out. No, I won't. No, because I'll just be here forever, won't I? Anyway. So, hello Tina, hi my darling, thank you for your messages earlier, um, yes, <laughs> it's, that, it's, it's this thing isn't it, anyway, um, hi Elka, hello my love, so we are going to do, um, we're going to do our uh, trauma reflex, my brain's not working, why is my brain not working, it's just because I've been having a little roll around doing some somatics myself, so I've gone off into la la la, um, if the door keeps creaking, I might have to get up and, um, and sort it out, um, which it probably will do because it's a bit windy. Anyway, don't need to know about that, do you? I need to get some WD-40, that's what I need to do. <laughs> then it wouldn't matter if it just blew around in the wind. So we're going to do side lying and um, on our backs for this. We're not going to go on to our fronts. So we're going to do a couple of new things, stuff that you've done before. Um, stuff that we're just going to play around a little bit with in the arch and curl and the diagonal arch and curl. So I'll just talk to you about that first. So just watching in the first instant. <laughs> Look, you can see all of me with this weird contraption, even if it is a bit blurry. So what we do is we'll do our usual arch and curl, but what we're going to do is we're going to, when we get into it, we're going to hug and we're going to hug close to our body so that our elbows go down on the floor. So we'll hug Arch of curl, hugging on the curl, we'll hug and oh, gradually over time we're going to move our arms further out so they become further out each time, well not each time but as you go along they're going to get wider so you start feeling more of a widening in the chest under the arms and eventually you might be hugging across the uh, chest and then opening out so even that's too, a bit too strong for me at the moment is my dog ball throwing arm is having a little play up <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so we'll do that. Then what we're going to do is we're going to work into the diagonal of the arch and curl. So we're going to diagonally arch. So we go over to one side, press. But what's going to happen is we're going to keep our arms out here and do it. And we're going to press into the opposite shoulder, press into the opposite shoulder when we arch into the diagonal. And then eventually what we're going to do is going to bring, uh, we're going to do our wash rag arms. And then but we're going to incorporate that into the um, into the diagonal arch. So what will happen is as you wash rag your as you di go off diagonally, your arm will wash rag backwards on the opposite shoulder and come forward on the um, on the same side as the diagonal pelvis. And then it will relax and then they'll both come forward again. So you're going to get a lot of tightening into one side and releasing and then you do the opposite on the other side so both my shoulders are rolling forward and then as i go back to do the diagonal arch that left side still arches forward and the right side goes back but you have to relax it as you come through the midline for both of them and then go forward so we're going to get our wash rag arm still happening but on the diagonal so this, we haven't done this before so we you can play around with that, see what happens. Uh, we, hopefully we're gonna do our legs, where we go to, uh, toe, we do, no, we'll do our wash rag legs. We'll play into the wash rag, we'll do our wash rag legs to lengthen down the sides. So that's all the stuff that we're doing on our backs. And then we're gonna come onto our sides and we're gonna do side lying. Who else have we got on here? Hello, Karen. We're going to do side lying either with your hand on your uh, head or your um, a pillow under your head um, and then we're going to have bent legs to start with so your lower leg stays where it is and then you lengthen the other one behind it so it's kind of resting in behind and then what we do is we're going to lengthen all the top by shortening the the bottom waist so the waist under here is going to shorten through the, this process so what we do is we slide the foot away, we reach down the mat. So I'm just lengthening my leg away down the mat. Then we lift it up, still lengthening. So my waist in the bottom is shortening all the time. So I'm lengthening this leg away. Then eventually we'll push into the lower leg. So we're going to build this up. Push into the lower leg. 
and then when we're ready, if we're able to, we take our hand over our head and reach everything away by pushing down into the lower leg. Yeah, so that's going to be kind of our ending position, but you don't have to bring the arm in or you just take the arm as far as it's happy to go. It might just touch the opposite side of the head. It really depends on how you are under your armpit, but we'll have done some work there by then, so you might be fine. And then all you do to come out of that is you slowly, slowly bring the opposite knee back to the back of that knee and rest the arm down. Okay, so hi Fiona. So that's our side lying, that one but we build that on that takes quite a bit of time and you've got to do it both sides. And then our last one is one that kind of people struggle with a little bit and that's because we have to go up on our arms. So we're not going to be as, as fully um, relaxed as usual because we're going to go up onto our arm, but we want to get our sides moving well. So this is a good one for that. So all you do is make sure your shoulder is under your uh, elbows under your shoulder, push into it all the time. So you lengthen up very gently. I'm not, flinging myself up but I don't want to slouch down into it so we stay high and then all we do is rest our arm on our side for a little while and then we just kind of rotate forward and back very gently to start with in the chest like we would do on the floor at other times still pushing down into that shoulder you're gonna to have to be mindful of that and we don't stop here for very long and you can always come out of it and then we start rotating and we rotate as far as our waist will let us and hopefully we'll have done quite a bit of work into the waist by this point so the lower back and then your arm can start just going where it wants to it can start tucking under if you want it to and looking underneath and then coming out and then looking over your shoulder so you've just got to be mindful of all this opening across the chest and how that shoulder feels okay so that's up to you how you use your shoulder if you can't go up onto your shoulder then you can just do it lying but i would say have a go you could just do it with the pillow of your hand there and just do some twisting from the waist but we want to do it with the shoulder in this position rather than elbow out here or arm out yeah we're going to do it with our because then we can really feel feel the squeezing in and out and breathing in and out and getting the breath down into the belly it's really good for sort of feeling that a bit more um and that's it and then we'll hopefully finish with our wash rag today because it will play into all, all the things that we've done okay hope that's all right with everybody I'm going to take my top off in a minute because it's getting a bit hot in here. <laughs> I'm going to have to get a fan for this room, I think. Um, right, let's go for it. So, um, any questions before we start? Anything you want to tell me? Anything you want to say? Anything exciting news? No, save your exciting news to the end. <laughs> um, and we will get started in a second. There's a few that I can't see. That's the thing that the magnifying thing that I've put on here covers up how many people are here. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't. Let me have a little light. Oh yes, there's four, four of you at the moment. Maybe some more will join us, or maybe you'll leave and you'll do it later, or maybe people will be watching this afterwards. Anyway, we'll go for it in a second. Yeah, let's go for it. I'm gonna do take my top off, and then lie down, and we'll have a little body scan. Get yourself sorted. Get yourself comfortable. I'm going to move the, actually I'm going to move the words out of the way. There we go. Oh, I can see what I can, yeah, so you can see me. Most of my body now, can't you? Ah. <laughs> right, so let's just have a little lie down. Bring your legs down if you can. Rest your arms where you're comfortable. Adjust your shoulders. Ah. Do nothing. The wind's calm now, maybe we won't have a squeaky door. Might hear my neighbours making their dinner. Flies are coming in. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> I'm gonna have an annoying fly the whole time. <sighs> Find your way out, fly. So because we're doing the sides, let's scan up a side. Pick a side, any side, and just start at your toes and scan all the way round, all the way up one side. I'm doing my left side first. Twitching foot. Travelling up, travelling up. Just taking in all your joints, all your muscles, seeing how soft they feel, tight they feel. Have a good look along the length, uh, the sides of the body, sides of the legs, the insides of the legs. Mm. 
Notice how you're moving on that side where you, when you get up to the torso and you're breathing. Notice if you're holding on to any tension. I seem to be holding on to a bit of tension in my left arm. So just give it a little whoop to get it going. Check out your arm. Really have a good look around the chest area because we're going to do quite a lot of work into them, into those muscles, the back and the front. And you've scanned your head, scan the opposite side, same way, just maybe going back down again. You can start the foot if you want to, it's up to you. So when you've done both sides, you've got a measure of what's happening around your lower back, your sides, your neck. Oh, we're getting some creaking. Just know that the creaking is my door. Not something happening in your body or the neighbours banging on the wall or something. <laughs> it probably sounds random on the fa on Facebook. Bring your legs up gently. Check your feet are hip width apart. If it gets too bad, I'll shut the door. So, make sure you're comfortable breathing in through the nose, out through the mouth. Check out where you're breathing to. And then start moving the breath into different places. So if there's no movement up in the shoulders, breathe up into the shoulders, see how your neck feels into the upper back. If it's all moving up in your chest, start breathing further down into the torso. Watch your ribs move. Start breathing down into your belly. Watch your sides move. Expand, let go of the, the, the uh, abdominal muscles so they move. Maybe notice if your diaphragm feels all right, moving down into the into the abdominal area from inside your ribs. And then when you're feeling ready, start thinking about arching. When your breath is moving down into your pelvis and it's down into your torso, then start gently arching. Oh, dog noises, that's nice. We might have the neighbour shouting at the, the dogs. <laughs> I think we'll have to shut the door on it's So nice though. So arching gently. And building up into your arch. I think I better shut the drawer, didn't I? You carry on. <laughs> you carry on arching. Here we go. <laughs> arching into your shoulders if you're feeling you're getting softer in the pelvis just arching let the arms roll if they want to keeping it nice and small if you need to if it gets bigger quicker great means all the work you've been doing is working breathing down into the abdomen arching the back gently pressing the shoulders back make sure if you're pressing the shoulders back in quite a strong way that your neck's okay, the connection's into the back of your neck, your head, your chin, soften your jaw as ever, breathe, breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth as you arch. And when you're feeling able to, we're going to a curl. So thinking about gently curling the pelvis past neutral towards your belly button. If you don't know what I'm talking about, maybe just go back and have a look at some of the other videos that I've been doing over the last month and get an idea. So we're working quite quickly into this arch and curl. So it doesn't have to be big, but we are going into the full kind of arch and curl movement quite quickly. So it might be a tiny way. Some of you might not. You might stay with just arching for a while till you feel ready. Otherwise, we're just moving into 
some sort of arch and curl that feels right for us. For you. <laughs> So my arms are automatically wanting to roll out and I'm just going to let them. I'm not going to get too involved in the arm movement, I'm still just watching my chest. Watching my shoulder blades, how they feel, feeling into the pelvis, where the tilts are. If there's any bouncing or shaking, that's my aim to make this smooth without worrying too much how big it gets. Everything's soft and controlled, there's no rush, no hurry. It's all about lengthening, training, retraining, letting muscles know they can reach a fuller potential than they're getting to. And that's hab habits, it's hab habits we're creating in this period of time as well, different habits. Maybe not walking as much or maybe not, or maybe sitting more. Maybe some of you working harder. I'm sure the nurses and care workers and delivery people, etc., etc., supermarket workers will could benefit from this. <laughs> Share it with them. Bless them. So I'm just arch and curling gently. So let's do a couple more rounds. It doesn't matter where you've got to. And then resting down, letting go. Soften the legs down. Just feel how much difference that's made already or not. How much more work you would need to do. Some of you, that might all you need be all you need to do every day to just keep your back feeling good. You've been doing this for a while. Just reminding your back. So we're going to bring our legs up again, gently bring them up, same position, softening into the ground, adjust yourselves, bring your um, elbow, your arms close to the body and then place the forearms on your abdomen. So they might be on the belly, some of you might be on the, um, on just below the rib cage, high up, a bit higher up on the rib cage. And then we're just going to arch and curl, we're going to press the shoulders back as we have been and as we curl we're going to slide the arms across each other and bring the elbows off the floor then we're just going to rest them back down again so we're just going to arch and curl in this way so feel those chest muscles tighten the shoulder blades move apart bring them down gently they're staying very close to the body at this point don't want to go any higher it's just arch and curling arching and the hands move apart curling, the hands come across the body, you might get to your elbows, you might not. Slide them down gently. I'm just letting my hands move away. My arms are staying close, but my hands are moving out to the side of my body, dragging fingertips to the side of my rib cage. If you want to, you could start opening the hands out. Opening the forearms out. Very gently investigate that. You probably won't get to the floor in this position, not comfortably anyway, the whole of the forearm. So just see where that point is that you know you need to stop gently. They might do if your shoulders are going back far enough, so be mindful, just be careful. And then maybe just change the angle of the elbows a bit, so take them out a bit further. You might take them out about 10 degrees away from the body, 20 degrees. Just investigate how that feels, still arch and curling. Sliding the forearms and the hands across the body, squeezing into your red light reflex, your curl, taking the elbows wide, wider. You can investigate each time. Don't take them up past 90, and especially don't take them up to 90 yet. Work your way in degree by degree, ten, maybe 10 degrees at a time, <laughs> or whatever feels all right. Be mindful of your neck as well, what's happening here, because we're widening the chest muscles. Your arms might open out fully, your backs of your hands might touch the floor at some point. Having a call coming through. 
excuse any noises you can hear. <laughs> it's my auntie June. She's 80, bless her. So my arms are coming right out to the side now, hugging right in, quite wide, not quite to 90, about 80 degrees from the side of the body. Yours don't have to come out that far. Some of you might be able to do it on one side, but not the other side. I've got a little bit of awareness of my left uh, muscles at the top into my arm when I do this. So a little bit sore, so I put my arms down before before I take the forearms out to the side, and it's a little, it becomes not so obvious and much smoother. We're gonna do a couple more rounds of this. And then I'm going to rest my arms down, let go, let my legs down, leave my arms out to the side where they are because they're quite happy out there. <laughs> so we're going to leave them as wide as you're comfortable. Have you a couple of rounds of breath and then gently bring your legs up again. So we're going to go back to our arch and curl, we're going to take it onto the diagonal. So what that means, all that means is as you arch your pelvis is going to just tilt off to one side so let's do the left side so as we arch and curl so your arms are wider than you would normally have them so they're not, not as close to the body as usual we're going to just gently so the shoulders are involved slightly go off onto one side of the pelvis just tilting the pelvis as you arch Shoulders are still curling forward. Just come up through the center line again into the curl. Both shoulders coming forward. It's gonna feel different at this angle. As you start sending the pelvis off gently to the side, investigating how far it will go. It might only move away from the midline in a little way to start with. Once you've got that happening and you're letting everything stay soft on that side, keep the right knee where it is. As you arch, don't let it kind of drop off. Then start pressing the right shoulder back. So left pelvis, right shoulder on the diagonal, coming back to the center, the vertical on the curl. So shoulders go forward as you curl, right shoulder goes back as you, uh, as you arch. So your left shoulder might not do as much pressing back as the right shoulder. It might just stay at neutral, it might go back a little bit but it will come forward on the on the arch on the curl sorry so it's left pelvis right shoulder diagonally arching breathing into the belly breathing out curling a bit coming back through the midline don't don't worry about trying to get the pelvis to meet across the middle on the curl so we're going to play into the shoulders a bit in a minute and you'll feel the difference. So what I want you to do is I want you to leave the left shoulder forward as you come forward and then take the right shoulder back so all that's changed is the left shoulder stays forward so we're kind of getting into wash rag arms almost so the right shoulder goes back the left shoulder comes forward as you tilt the pelvis off to the left so we're getting a little twist in the upper body so all that happens as you go past neutral, both shoulders kind of relax to the middle and then the right shoulder goes back, the left shoulder goes forward. You're tightening into the chest muscles, but your pelvis is tilted off to the left. They relax as you bring the pelvis to neutral and then both go forward as you curl. Come back to neutral with the shoulders as you go to neutral with the pelvis. Take the right shoulder back, take the left shoulder forward. So the left shoulder is always going forward. 
posing the right shoulder. When you go into a curl, both shoulders go forward. So it's a little bit to get your head round. It's good differentiation for the brain to have to think about. So you have to slow it all down, breathe in. Left shoulder's always going forward, but it does come out and go to neutral as it's right shoulder comes forward, both shoulders go forward on the curl. So we're just having a little play around with shoulder positions. Let it come out of neutral. It's not gonna be happy to just stay forward all the time, that left shoulder, but we do to get some nice squeezing in there and releasing. It's a nice controlled way. Brian's got to catch up a little bit with this. That's all right, <laughs> why not? Left pelvis is tilting away, right shoulder's going back. When you come to neutral to go into a curl, both shoulders go forward. I'm in a curl, both shoulders are forward, pelvis is tilted off the floor. As I release back, both shoulders go back to the floor. And then as I curl, left pelvis goes down to the bottom, right shoulder goes back, left shoulder goes forward. So we're getting that wash rag feeling in the chest. It's very different, it plays into different muscles on different sides. It'll be a little bit hard to get your brain round to start with, so slow it all down. I'm going to do two more. And curling both shoulders forward. Coming to neutral, everything is softened down. As I arch into my left pelvis, push the right shoulder back, left shoulder goes forward. And then we're going to let go. So have a let go, relax down, soften. And then we're going to do it all on the other side. <laughs> so that'll get you going. The brains are going to really have a little play around with this one. Remember, just remember that as you curl, just roll both shoulders forward. And as you arch, only the left shoulder is going to go back now and the right shoulder is going to go forward. So we're going to begin with the pelvis. Pelvis is just going to start tilting off to the right. Don't worry too much about the shoulders. They're just going to do a normal arch and curl shoulders. Worry about the right pelvis. Let that movement start happening. So start tilting off the, off the midline, away from the sacrum. Tilt it into the right pelvis as you arch. You've all done this before, those people that I know are watching. <laughs> and then eventually start letting the left shoulder press back. A little bit more than the right. We're arching, curling, we go back to normal curl. It's just the right pelvis and left shoulder that put a bit more effort in on the arch. Everything comes back to the center for the curl. So I'm gonna investigate this time, taking my arms a bit wider. Some of you may want to, may not want to. Once you've got the rhythm of that and you can feel that left shoulder being a bit more active than the right shoulder when it goes back, then you can start playing to that right shoulder coming forward every time. Both go to neutral just before you curl and then they both go forward. Only the right's going forward every time. The left goes back on the arch. So you've just got to be able to control that left shoulder, right? It's always going to go forward, whatever movement you're doing. It takes a bit of thinking about it. You might have to stop and start a little bit. It might be a bit jolty to start with till you get the idea of it. Good differentiation for the brain because it won't be concentrate. You can't concentrate on everything. So it will just focus on one area possibly for a little while and the others will just do their own thing. So diagonal arch, both the shoulder on the left and the right and pelvis are going, for, are going um, back and the right shoulder is going forward. They both undo, both shoulders relax till you go into the curl and they both go forward. Pelvis tilts towards the belly button. Go to neutral and as the arch happens, the right shoulder goes forward. Even though there's a diagonal with the left. So 
Are you getting that wash rag feeling in the shoulders on the arch? Just getting a normal curl through the shoulders on the curl. <laughs> Make sure you soften the shoulders on the right every time before you go into whatever move you're doing. So at neutral, when you've got a flat back, the shoulders should just be soft. I'm gonna do two more. And my last one. And then I'm gonna let go, soften the legs down, bring the arms a bit close to the body. Bend the elbows a little bit, soft, soft, soft. So we're just gonna do a little bit of neck movement. So bend your elbows a little bit, put your palms down into the floor, bring your elbows a bit further out to the side of the body. And then just very gently start moving the head side to side. This is a great one to do bed at night if you've got neck problems, first thing in the morning. Just gently taking the head side to side. Just watch where the connections are, what's going on in the neck, how it feels. Keep the weight in the head. So we're going to start taking the left ear to left shoulder or chin to chest almost as we take as we keep doing that side to side movement then we're going to take the chin up to the right corner of the room left ear left chin down to left shoulder gently come through the midline and start taking the chin up to the corner of the room the right right side of the room so your chin will be further away from the right shoulder. So we're doing a diagonal movement through the neck. Mindful of your upper back, your chest, your jaw, soften the jaw. Try not to turn this into a stretch. There's a lot of muscles involved in this. Tightening down into the left jaw, left shoulder, left like a little squeeze, but you're not squeezing the shoulder up, just squeezing down into that side. And then you're lengthening away from it, taking the chin away, tilting the ear down to the floor, probably chin up towards the ceiling in the right corner of the room. So we're just going to do a few of those, just playing to it. Make sure you're not stretching, you're not forcing anything, nothing hurts, you're not overdoing. It could be a tiny little movement, this. You have hardly any movement. For a while then it might get longer over time it's like you're sort of wiping the back of your head along the floor on a diagonal movement know that the muscles are tightening into the back of the neck when you lift your chin so have that awareness and that lengthen at the front in some parts notice where that is keep your brain involved with this movement And then we're gonna go back to the center now and rest. This is not comfortable, you might try it with your knees up. If you haven't already, might make a difference. So just start taking your head side to side again without any angle. And then we're going to start taking the chin down to the right, the ear down to the right shoulder. And then the chin goes up towards the left corner of the room, left over the left shoulder, comes back down to the right shoulder, goes out to the left. Be mindful of what's not hurting, what is hurting, what's not okay, what is okay. Do it gently, don't force anything. Not in your neck. Be 
You want to use the breath more effectively. You can breathe in as you take the chin to the corner of the room. Breathe out as you squeeze down into the right neck. Very slowly. Keep noticing what's happening, any little pains or twinges, so don't push into them the next time. Know that you might have gone a bit too far. You're really attempting to lift the chin up as it gets past that middle line at the breastbone. Unless it hurts, then you don't. I'm sure my head's sliding back as I lift into the corner. We're going to do two more. And then soften down into the middle, let go. Couple of rounds of breath, doing nothing, and then we're gonna go onto our left side. So come over gently, bring your knees up first. Go onto your side, get a pillow if you need one. If you don't need one, you can have your hand under your um, elbow bent and the hand under your head. Bent knees, 45 degrees at least. We take mine up to about 90, just under 90. And then we're gonna make sure we're on our side. So tilt forward just slightly. So I want you more tilted forward rather than tilted back. So you might be on your side or just slightly tilted forward. Okay, so we're gonna slide our, our right leg out behind us along the mat. So it's still rested, the thighs rested on my, on my, um, my knees rested, my right knees rested on my left calf. And then very gently, I'm going to check that I'm still let forward slightly. It's just a slight tilt. Don't overdo it. Don't lean right forward. Um, and we're gonna, I'm going to lengthen my leg down the mat. So my toes are pointing down. Lengthen, lengthen, lengthen away. Lengthen away. So my upper waist is lengthening. My hips moving down. I feel my lower waist engaging. I'm going to lift my leg up. And then I'm going to bring my leg down. Keeping it out. Keeping it out. Keeping it out. Keeping it out. Lengthen, lengthen away. Lengthen down, let, let it come back to where it started. My, my knees resting back on my calf so that I know that I've lengthened my bottom muscles. Okay, we're gonna go again. So you could do it in time with me if you want to. Reach that leg away. Feel the lower waist muscles engage. Your pelvis might push into the floor on the bottom. Lift the leg up, keep reaching it away. This is gentle, so don't overdo it. It's very strong. And then lengthen that leg away, lengthen it away, lengthen it down, bring it down to the floor, rest it back on the knee, let the lower waist soften. So we're going to do it again, and this time we're going to push the lower leg into the floor. I'm going to start at the ankle, so push the ankle down first, you'll feel your um, hip and your leg engage, and eventually it will turn into a whole leg push, but start it at the kind of ankle calf position. So. This time we're gonna lengthen the leg away to the bottom of the mat, lift it up, push the calf and the ankle down into the floor on the lower leg and keep reaching away with the upper leg. Feel those muscles in the waist engage in the lower uh, body. Your leg is only going up to hip height, don't take it any higher. Then keep reaching it away, keep pushing that leg down into the floor. You'll find your leg touches down a bit further than it did probably. And then let that lower leg come softly back into the back of the other leg so it doesn't have to come back and sit on the other knee it just goes back mine's kind of my knees on my ankle my lower ankle or my calf on my lower ankle have a little rest these are quite strong and take a bit of effort so if you want to breathe in at the same time breathe out first breathe in reach the leg away reach the leg away push into the lower leg keep reaching just make sure you can feel the lower waist engage. Lower the leg down, breathe out. 
So this time we're going to do it with an arm if you want to. You don't have to do the arm as well. So all that's going to happen is you're going to breathe in as you go up. So breathe out first. Breathe in. Reach leg away. Push into the floor. Reach the arm gently over the head. Keep reaching the leg away. Reach the arm away. And come down. It's very strong to hold it, so don't hold it for too long. You just want to feel that the lower waist is engaged. Let the lower waist go gently. Breathe out as you come down. So this time, let's do two more with the arm, with the leg reaching, with the leg pushing down into the floor. Start it at the ankle if you can't get that feeling of pushing that lower leg down into the floor. So breathe in, breathe out, breathe in as you go up. All of this is happen happening simultaneously, except the arm going over the head that goes up and then reach everything away for one reach and then bring it all down. Let the lower waist go gently. Don't drop into the lower waist. Make sure everything's soft. Take a round of breath, breathe out. Breathe in as you go up. Just get, gather your thoughts of what's happening. There's a lot happening. Feel that lengthening down the right side of the waist. Check you're tilted forward and not tilted back, but don't overtly do it. <laughs> don't roll forward and rest everything down. And we've done that side. Rest, rest, rest. Maybe bring the upper, upper knee back onto the lower knee. Have a little rest there. Maybe you could do this with a pillow and have your arm out in front of you, the lower arm. Just make sure everything's soft around the waist, upper waist, lower waist. And then we're going to gently push up, rest onto that lower elbow. We're gonna start this quite quickly. Have your knees a little bit further away. Make sure you're comfortable on your waist. You might need a pillow under the hip. Sometimes it's better to have a, a pillow under the hip. Make sure you're stacked up, elbow uh, under shoulder. Push up through that elbow gently, so you're pushing down into the ground. Keep your hand, hand flat and soft. And then we're just gonna take the shoulder forward and back gently. Very gently. Look over the shoulder, you've done a bit of neck work, so hopefully that should be all right. Just taking the shoulder back. Breathe in as you go back. Down into the belly, let it, let it help you go back. Come forward. You can let the hand come down to the floor if you want to and let it tuck under. This can become bigger. Slow it down. A nice twisting through the spine. Keep pushing up through the arm so your neck doesn't drop down. That'll keep it not hurting so much for your shoulder. Let your kind of forearm and your elbow take a little bit of the pressure. Look over your shoulder, look under your shoulder as you come forward. Looking back. Hopefully you'll start feeling this gets a bit bigger when everything realises it's okay. Let your knees and your thighs be loose so they can slide about a bit. I don't have to anchor you. I'll do two more. So it is quite strong through the shoulders. Remember, if you can't do it up on the shoulder, you just lie on your side. Last one, and then slowly come down. Let go, rest on your pillow, rest on your hands. Now you're going to roll over into your backs and turn onto the other side. I'm going to kind of just turn around so I'm still facing the camera. And then we're going to do the other side, both of those moves. Now just keep your left, your uh, body low, your head low, your neck low. Just because I've swung round doesn't mean you can. <laughs> So on this one, the first one, pillow under your head, arm out in front of you, or rest your head on your um, upper arm. Tilt forward slightly, knees at, at least 45 degrees to the body. Tilt forward, that pelvis comes forward of the other one. And then we'll start that process again. So breathe in as you go up, so breathe out. Breathe in, length of that leg away from you. Point the toes down. Lift the leg to thigh uh, to hip height, 
reaching it away, feel the, the uh, waist muscles engage and then lower down gently, gently lowering down to the floor, then letting the knee come back into the back of the other knee or resting on the th on resting on the calf. Everything soft, lower waist soft. We're not using the lower yet, leg yet, and we're not using the arm. I'm gonna do three of these without using the lower leg. So we're gonna breathe in as we go up, so breathe out, breathe in. Reach the leg, slide it along the floor, reach it away, feel the lower waist engage, the hip might press into the floor, only up to hip height, and then lower down. Keep reaching that leg away. Lower everything, lower the waist gently, especially if your trauma reflex is down, be mindful of that. Let everything soften, let that knee fall into the back. I keep my hand on the floor in front of me so I don't completely roll forward. I'm going to do one more without the lower leg. So breathe in as you go up, breathe out first, breathe in. Reach the, the upper leg down the mat, lift it up, still reaching it away, feel the waist muscles engage in the lower waist. Breathe out as you lower the leg down, let the knee come into the back of the leg. Soften everything, let go, make sure the lower waist is let go. So the next three we're going to do with our legs pressing down into the floor at the same time. Start at the ankle and the calf, it's almost like it's rotating into the floor. Pushing that leg, try it now if you can't feel it when you go up, just have a little push down of the calf first. If you try and do it from the upper leg, it kind of rotates you the other way. So try and, try and press the heel down even to the carpet, or to the carpet, to the mat. <laughs> okay, so we're going to breathe out, breathe in. Reach the leg away, push the lower leg down into the floor, feel the waist engage a little bit more in the hip and the lower waist, reaching the leg away. Slowly come down, come down, let everything go gently, breathing out. I can't do the breathing and talking, so you'll have to do it for me. Let's do it again, breathe out, breathe in. Going up, pushing that leg down into the floor, reaching the leg away, feeling everything. I can feel this up into my shoulder, up into my rib cage. Everything's squeezing. Lower everything down, let the pelvis settle down. Lower waist softens. So you've got to do this gently. If you're reaching away and your lower waist is hurting, because it's your trauma side, then <coughs> And don't reach so far, don't lift so high, don't stay up for so long. Push the leg down, lift the leg up. Reach the leg away, come down gently. Try not to bounce it, I had a little bounce there because I'd overreached. So we're gonna do three more, but we're gonna bring the arm in. So all the arm involves is just reaching over your head again. So I put it up on your waist to start with. I rotated quite far forward, so I'm just trying to adjust myself. And then we're gonna breathe, breathe in, breathe out, reach the leg away, push down into the lower leg, feel the engagement lengthening up on the top body, top of the body, squeezing in the lower waist, reach the arm away, reach a bit further this side, and then come down gently, bring the arm back, let everything soften. Make sure the lower waist is softened because it's lengthening the lower waist as well when you come back after it's been shortened. I'm gonna do it twice more. Breathe in, breathe out, lift up, push down into the leg, arm over the head. As far as your body will let you, you might have to adjust the neck. I've had to adjust my neck a little bit. Come back down. We'll do one more. Breathe in, breathe out. Some of you might be doing it at a quicker pace. Just make sure you've got control. You just wanna make sure you can feel that lengthening in the upper body and the squeezing in the lower body. Rest down, let go. Couple of breaths, doing nothing, knees resting on, on each other. You might tilt back a little bit. Just make sure you're comfortable. You're not lying there in pain or anything. 
So the next one is where we go up onto our shoulder. Now this, my right shoulder isn't as great as my left shoulder, so I might have to come down onto my side. So I will take, make that choice, like all of you will, about whether that's okay. But I'm gonna make sure I've got all the elements right before I start, that I'm stacked up, nothing's hurting in the waist. And then we're just gonna take the shoulder forward and back gently. I'll be mindful of my lower shoulder. I'm gonna keep pushing up through the forearm and the elbow, looking over my head. Bringing the shoulder forward, letting the arm sweep down. Keep checking out that you're pushing up through the shoulder. If you need to come down and rest down, just do it with your shoulder on the floor, the right shoulder, then do. Breathe in as you go back, look over your shoulder. It should become a little bit softer and you should be able to sort of extend it through the movements and just take it that little bit further each time might find that you can, you might not find that you can, you might have to do it in a small way the whole time, it might just be too strong for you to do, to start with. I'm gonna do a couple more rounds, it might be too much for your neck or your hip. And I'm just gonna go back and forth one more time. and then I'm gonna let go. I'm gonna come down on my side, I'm gonna rest there. Some of you might be carrying on a couple more. So we're gonna gently come over onto our back. So just remember we didn't do our wash rag legs, did we? We did our neck instead. I thought we'd go to the neck for a little change, so. What we'll do is we'll come over onto our backs and we'll take our arms wide. We won't do the arms straight away, we'll just leave that out. But they've had a go at this already. We're going to bring our knees, uh, feet as wide as the mat. Nice wide knees. And then very gently start taking our knees side to side. See, if I'd have done that earlier, that wouldn't have felt like this. <laughs> Feels great through my waist. So just taking the knees gently side to side, breathing in as they go to the side, breathing out, breathing out as they come back, and then turning your neck gently when you're ready. What you might find is that your chin wants to go to your shoulder, that's all right, let it, or it might want to look over your shoulder. From what you were doing earlier, you can investigate that. Just, just watch your legs from side to side at the moment. Don't bring the arms in, let them just peacefully wait. <laughs> Let's just get the brain involved with the waist through this movement, pelvis movement, what the feet are doing, what the calves are doing. How does it feel through the calves? And you let go in the groin and the inner thigh. Does your knee go forward as it goes down to the floor? And then when you've got a measure of how your thighs and your calves and your hips are responding and your waist and your lower back and your abdomen and how your breath feels, then you can start bringing the arms in. And all that happens is the arm your head turns towards rotates back like we did on the diagonal and the other arm rotates forward, squeezing into the chest muscles and vice versa, just opening the shoulders up, the legs should be doing their own thing really, if you looked at them enough. And then you can just focus up into the shoulders, turning the head, feeling how the chest muscles feel. Hopefully they should feel all right because you did quite a bit of squeezing in and out earlier. And maybe not in this more open position, but quite open, some of you. You know how great that feels through the lower back, through the pelvis, from all the side work you did. You can start rotating this into your arms, into your hands, reaching the fingers, the hand that's opening, squeezing the shoulder blade down your back, especially if you're going right over to the onto the knees, onto the side of the thighs. Your shoulder will probably 
squeeze down your back as you open it up open the chest up on that open side squeezing in closing the fingers maybe on the other side opening them up squeezing the shoulder blades down the back getting a nice arch in the back you can squeeze your bottom muscles on the upper side just play into some things see what's happening see what's happening through your fingers you can tilt the head down Remember, if you squeeze something, you've got to let it go at some point, gently. So I'm squeezing my shoulder, my left shoulder down my back as my arm rotates backwards. And I'm squeezing the bottom muscles to let my hip go forward, forward more in the top. You could push into the foot as well if you wanted to on the edge and that heel. Get a real arching into that back on the side that's at the top. Because we've done so much work, you'll probably be able to do these things now. Your brain's engaged. So it's done all the other parts, so then you can play into the ones that you haven't, like the shoulder blade sliding down, bum squeeze, foot push. Try not to swing side to side. Try to come back to the middle. Use your breath when you breathe in. Get even more of an arch. If your thigh is going down onto the floor, you could give a little push into that thigh. Notice how it sends the knee on the other side forward a bit. I'm going to do one more each way. you've done the last one come back to the center relax your arms down soften everything make yourself comfortable <sighs> and let go feel like a squash pancake <laughs> that's how somatics is meant to make you feel So scanning up when you're ready, scanning wherever you want to start, head, feet, just one side. Noticing any changes. Scan your arms. Soften your fingers, they might be the last arms might be hanging on. Wrists. So you can stay here forever if you like. I'd like to stay here forever. It's very nice. <laughs> very nice and warm in here. Sun's still shining in, birds are singing. Or stay here, meditate, drift off. If you don't want to do that, you've got things you've got to get back to then. Wiggling, getting things moving again. And then gently thinking about bringing your knees up, coming onto your side, resting a little bit before you think about pushing up. Right, just be, take a couple of breaths on your side and then start thinking about pushing up through your shoulders, arms. Hello. I'm going to pop that thing off and then, well, hey, there I am with lovely lines through my head. What's going on? Oh, hello. 
Your pattern's going on. <laughs> I'm just going to shut the doobry. There we go. Is that gone? Oh, look. I've got white lines. Must be goggle marks from going out walking the dog. <laughs> Maybe I should have left the thing on. Anyway, I hope you're okay. If you're still lying down, enjoy it. If you're not, then hello. And uh, I hope you enjoyed that. And remember, you can email me if you've got any questions. Oh dear, let's sort that out. And then you can, um, uh, yeah, message me, email me, let me know, comments in here, message me on Facebook, um, any questions that you've got. And I'll get back to you as soon as I can, which will probably be quite soon because there's not a lot going on apart from editing. Um, so lots of love to you all. Stay safe. Take care. There's no messages coming. Oh, you're very welcome. Was that delicious? I found it delicious too, Elka. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Thanks for your comments. That's lovely. Um, so take care. And uh, I'm going to take my very weird patterned eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'm going to go and feed my child, as usual. Mwah! Speak to you soon. Lots of love.